Andrew Jackson once said, "All the rights secured to the citizens under the Constitution are worth nothing and a mere bubble, except guaranteed to them by an independent and virtuous judiciary." Good evening, everybody. You are watching an hour with Law Seeko. I am Adit. Then today we are extremely excited to have. Madhurima Datta, who has kept not one, not two, but three judicial. Madhurima, we are extremely delighted to have. Welcome to an. Thank you so much, Adhikar. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Doing good. All right. All right, Madhurima. Uh, today we have a lot of questions lined up for you. There are a lot of people who want to get into the judiciary. There are a lot of people who want to know how to crack an exam, and I'm sure that today you will be of great help to them. Uh, so first of all, let's just start with something really. Uh, could you please tell us a little about yourself before we go any further? Okay, I passed out from college in uh, 2015, and after that, I started litigation. So after a year of litigation, like uh, practicing under a senior, I started my firm, like law firm, with one of my friend, and then like it's going on till like last two years. Then I started preparing for uh, judiciary, which is like a year back, I guess. And other than that, I also have a clothing line, as well as a travel blog, and a YouTube travel channel. So. yeah that's it about me okay wait let me let me let me get this straight so you have you are you have a law firm you have a clothing line you are a blogger have a youtube channel and you uh, also have cracked three judiciary exams wow that's that's quite a list of achievements i'm sure is there anything that you don't want to like you i want to try everything it's like trying my hand on everything so let's see what else is left so i'm going to do everything That's what I believe. <laughs> All right, uh, Madhurima. So, uh, how many judiciary exams have you appeared for so far? I guess uh, four, uh, five. Like four, five, four, five, five state. Yes. You've appeared for five state exams, out of which you've cracked three states. Ah uh, no no four states, uh, out of which yes three states and one that I already got selected as well and. So, uh, are you are you planning to appear for any more exams, or are you, are you planning to take up uh, your junior? Uh, uh, yes, another exam is lined up right now. Is the Delhi Judiciary exam? I'm yet to take that. So yes, I want to take that as well. So it's there in sixth of May. Wow. All right. Uh, so, uh, Madhurima, when did you decide that you want to? When did you take that big step that okay, now this is high time I should I should appear for judiciary exam? Uh, well, it happened very recently. It was not like that. I've been planning since I was in college. It was not like that. Since I was in litigation, I was practicing. Then suddenly, out of like you know, one day, even my parents wanted me to sit for it, and I was like, why not try my hand on it as well? Because Come on, it's like the one of the most prestigious and you know safe, secure, and comfortable job. So yes, that's how we yeah, are started, and it will be around a year back, I guess. And I'm prepared for like six to eight months for the exams. All right, that is six to eight months, and you cracked the exam. I think that is that is very fair. So, uh, could you please tell us what is the process of applying for a judiciary exam? I mean, is it a complicated application procedure, or or how do you go about it? See, uh, it actually varies. It depends from state to state. Not every state has their examination, judicial examination, at the same time. So, like different times, they have their exams. So, you what you need to do is you need to research and you need to decide which state you want to appear for. according to your preference so once you have decided that then think about it and start researching on it that when this particular states have their exams and it's not like they have a particular fixed time it's like it can vary whenever there is a vacancy there are vacancies then they come up with the notifications and after the notifications like in, within 10 15 days they start the application procedure and it's not a big deal it's like a very easy procedure it's like you have to fill the application form you have to get registered and that's it but the one thing they need that the eligibility that you need to enroll get enroll with any of the state bar councils so that is something important other than your blb degree that is a graduate 
So, yeah, that's it. All right. So, so if I get it correctly, you just have to enroll with a, a, any of the bar associations, and uh, yeah. any of the state yeah. bar associations uh, enrollment yeah. suffices. Yes, that you need to do. All right. And uh, so, uh, tell us, tell us something. Where do we find that info? Um, pardon, uh, Aditya, not at all. Aditya, you're not audible. I can't hear you. Okay, uh, where do you find the information on the state bar's website? Yeah, there are certain websites, and if you like Google it only, I mean, you will get the idea of when their like come vacancies are coming on you. But you can uh, go and register on some like random websites like uh, some sarkari nokri dot com. These are there, so you will get the notification whenever there is a vacan. I mean, there is a like vacancies or there's a notifications. You will get it in your mail ID. So yeah. This is how we can go for it, or even if you are like preparing. Okay. So, so you will anyway going to like day and night. You are going to like Google it, so you will anyway get to know it, like whenever they are going to have it. Okay, and uh, you said that uh, you have uh, uh, four bar exams and four uh, sorry judiciary exams, and you're going for the Delhi one very frequently, uh, very recently. So tell us something. Is there a bar on how many states you can appear for, or you can appear for any state at any point of time? No, no, no. There is no bar. Nothing like that. You can appear for any number of states, any number. No, it's actually not like any number of times. So there is an age limit. So you have to follow that. Other than that, yeah, within that age limit, how many times you are giving it, that's not a big deal. And you can appear again and again till you are within that age bar. And there is nothing like you cannot appear for more than some particular states, a uh, number of states. There is nothing like that. You can appear for all the states if you want to. Oh wow, that is that is great. So you precisely have like a lot of opportunities if you want to go ahead and become a judge. Yeah. Right. I'm sorry. You're not audible properly. Okay, just give me one second. Uh, are you able to hear me better? Yeah, yeah, right now, yes. Okay. okay, great. All right. So tell us something. Uh, what is the process? What is the uh, what? How do you prepare? Like you said, you took six to eight months for preparation. So, uh, what was an ideal way of preparing for a judiciary exam? And was it the same for all, or did you follow different strategies for different exams? No, it's not actually same for all. It depends from people. To I mean, from person to person, it does vary. So how can you can how much you can get it right, and how much you need to put. And for me, it was like I've joined a law institution for the judiciary exam. So I have not even completed the entire course as well. So like six to eight months I have to leave because yeah, I have given those exams and I've already done with it. So yes. So the way you are going to approach that is something important. But first, what you need to do is you need to make a plan of action. And you, you need to act accordingly, like diligently, and you need to implement it. So you are the one who is going to decide that how much time you require a day to study. For me, it was like I was working as well and I was studying. So I couldn't be able to give like more than four to six hours a day. It was not possible for me. So yeah, six to like four to six hours was the maximum time I have given. I still remember like those six to eight months. That was like the maximum I have given. So it is not the same for everyone. Like people are there who studies for like 12, 13 hours a day. So yeah, varies actually. And the first thing what you need to do is like you need to make a plan. How you're going to go about it. And you have to act very diligently. Because if you're like, yeah, hai, I'm going to like study this, 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 this things in a day and you are not doing it, then it, it becomes very difficult at the end to like cover up everything. So yeah, this is how it all right, Madhurima. Madhurima, uh, Amit Kumar Asthana has this question and I wanted to ask you this as well. Uh, given the fact that there are different states and each state has its own official language, is language a barrier for uh, appearing for civil exams for the states which have uh, non-English uh, you know, English or Hindi speaking uh, language? Uh, well, language is very important when it comes to judiciary, but though there it's not like, um, like every state doesn't have a language problem. See, if you have your second language, Hindi, then it is like for you it is very easy because you can actually opt for like all the North Indian states 
Central India and lot of states, even West Bengal, there is like option. You can either take Bengali, Hindi, Nepali, Urdu, Santhali. There is a lot of uh, language options as well. But few states, like the South Indian states, like whether it's Kerala or Odisha, they do have their second language, like Odia and Malayali. Then Gujarat, you can have. Uh, you going to have Gujarati. So yes, they, those in those states, that's a barrier. You cannot go for it, like without knowing the language of that state. But there are also few states which doesn't give so much of importance in the language paper, like Andhra Pradesh, even Odisha as well, because they have like around I guess twenty marks for their uh, second language thing. So even if you are like not attempting that twenty marks, still you can clear the question paper. It's like no big deal. I mean, if you are like thoroughly prepared the other subjects and I mean other topics nicely, so it won't be a big deal for you if you don't know the language because it doesn't carry much marks. All right. uh so tell us uh, you were talking about that uh, you need to make a strict and stringent routine and you need to follow that routine uh, diligently tell us how your routine was while you were preparing for uh, your your exams yeah i never had a fixed routine though but i knew it that i have to study and i have to finish up this this topics in this week or maybe in this day i not days actually in the week because maybe one day i am giving like 2 hours next day i might give like 6 hours another day i might give like 8 hours and again it's like it depends because i know i have to do it and to complete and finish my work and finish it off so this is how i have done it but people what generally they do they generally leave everything i mean they don't generally they only prepare for the judiciary exam the then many people are there who don't take up jobs or anything because when you are in a job it's very difficult to study and you know to finish up the deadlines so yes this is how i have done i mean not really great all right uh, with this i also have a question from anu bhatnagar who wants to know that if someone is preparing for judiciary does that mean that he or she should only go ahead and just prepare for judiciary or can they take up other options as well so it depends how much they can if they like really wanted to do judiciary then i will rather say that you know just leave everything else and prepare for this at least you will know how much time you need to give it give a specific amount of time like maybe a year or maybe like me 6 to 8 months will be more than enough so leave everything else and study for it prepare for it if you really want to go for judiciary if judiciary is your like not the priority and the second option then yeah you can do something else as well and yeah you can like prepare side wise for judiciary exams it will All take right. more so yeah All right. So apart from the language, uh, like you told us that uh, there are a couple of states where language is a must, and there are a couple of states where language is not given so much weightage. So apart from language, is there any other criteria on which a person can choose a state? This is a question by Pratiksha Maheshwari. See, it um, solely depend upon the person who is like giving the exam and choosing the state, which like can be the geographical. maybe the geographical part of the place or maybe yeah language barrier or maybe like people were generally do like 90% not 90 actually 100% people who are like preparing for the judiciary they the first preference has always been delhi judiciary because the life and obviously you don't need to go to like the uh, rural areas and anywhere because everywhere is within you have to be in within delhi only so the life is much more easier there and obviously comfortable but once you are like in some other state like chatisgarh especially so you know the condition of the state so many people there are like only the chatisgarh people opt for those so there are like many people who don't go for states like chatisgarh orissa you know bihar those parts so yes all right also tell us something that apart from uh, you know the facts that people have their own preferences to choose a state is there anything in particular that you would like to say in terms of the uh, the like the chances of an individual cracking a judicial exam in a certain state for example certain state might come up with a relatively easier pattern of question paper or will have a relatively easier selection process while some might have it a bit tougher is there anything of that sort as well that pe- that people might uh, want to know well see the thing is uh, there is already i mean the same pattern has been everywhere like you have to first sit for the prelims then the mains then the interview so this pattern has been like followed by every state all the state now the pattern of the questions has been different many states there are they only focus on the law questions and the legal aspects but there are many states which 
not only focuses on the law as well as general knowledge uh, maths mathematics reasoning yeah so it actually depends from state to state like uh, west bengal judiciary what happened was uh, they had a paper of around 200 marks and it was 50% 50 or 60% was legal questions and other than that uh, all the questions are yes english english gk current affairs as well as static gk then maths and reasonings everything was there so it's actually depends the question patterns every state doesn't have the same question pattern even delhi judiciary is uh, very different even they have like gk and english as well as law but yeah very is actually while himachal pradesh judiciary uh, have only they have like three papers one is the civil one and other two are criminal law one criminal law two and there you will get like only legal questions and nothing else so it varies all right, all right. Uh- so uh, madhurima you started preparing for judiciary after you graduated if i'm not wrong right you took 6 to 8 months to prepare graduated, yeah. yeah so tell us something if anybody and this is also a question by pratiksha maheshwari if anybody wants to prepare it during their college life so is it possible to prepare for it side by side while they are pursuing their own uh, law schools yes and that i think that's will be the perfect thing to do if you really want to join judiciary that start preparing from your fourth fifth years at from the very beginning that is the only thing i think if you are like really serious about it then you should do it from fourth fifth year that then it will be pretty easier for them to like crack it in the very first or second attempt and it won't take like a longer time a much longer time like what generally people does that delhi judiciary people really sit for like two three times to crack it so yeah this way they will not take much it will it won't take much time if they like start preparing it for it from like fourth fifth years at least for their college All right. Uh, so, uh, Madhurima, we will talk a little about the question paper uh, and and the format of the question paper. What is the general format of the prelims uh, paper? General format is it's only objective based, and I as I already told you that uh, it, different states have different pattern. Somebody has only law questions. Some has like law questions, English questions, GK. Well, they focuses on. Uh, static gk as well as current gk then they have maths as well and reasoning as well especially this happens in uh, U- uttar pradesh they have like two different question papers for prelims in two parts you have to sit for like two papers in one day one is solely based on gk like 100 marks on gk another one is solely based on law so this is how it is okay and uh, and what what all includes in the league like for example in clat we had very limited and this is like a very stupid analogy that i'm trying to do here between clat and judiciary exam but yeah, I, i know that <laughs> Yeah, but but because CLAT is so limited, we just get very limited amount of question. Of course, we are trying to get into a national law university, and we are trying to get into the highest body judiciary. Or the difference has to be there. But uh, what is uh, what what are the standard subjects that one needs to focus on, or do they need to focus on every law that's possible? Because I think that would be a little too taxing. Well, the standard subjects are the sub uh, sub procedural laws which are there, but there are. Um, every state has different syllabus so they do have different topics and different subjects as well but the topics which are like very important and mainly most of the states have actually all of the states have like crpc ipc evidence then uh, contracts cpc uh, yeah specific relief act these are limitation act these are like followed by almost all the states because this is the most important other than that many states had like uh, negotiable instrument act then torts it, um, international law it's actually varies arbitration law like delhi has ab- arbitration law and i think rajasthan and not any other state does have arbitration law for, from the very beginning from prelims only so this is how they have like di- um, divided it and uh, yeah this is how it is and what is the format of the questions are they a same principle application uh, based question or do you have to like or or they are very objective in the sense that just how clat llm paper is wherein every question is very specific you are asked sections you are asked case laws is it like that or is it a factual prince facts facts and principle based or is it something else entirely 
Uh, well, it has a mixture of everything. For like judiciary, there is you cannot actually have a syllabus or have a topic. It's like it's so vast. You will just have a subject. You have to like study everything from it. You never know from where the questions are coming from. So, and every state has their patterns. So it is like like Delhi. Delhi mains paper is like application based, solely application based. While other states like even uh, West Bengal Judiciary or Himachal Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, it is near. Yeah, it's theoretical. It's purely theoretical and no application based. But Delhi is the difficult one because it is purely application based. The main question and the main paper. So yes. All right. Even if it's a mix of everything, I am assuming that you will have to learn the sections from the Bare Act. Right, and this is a question by Ankit Kumar who wants to know uh, some tips on how to remember so many sections from different bear acts while preparing for judiciary. That is something which an individual need to like do it all by himself because obviously it's like how you are comfortable with it, how you are taking it up. So when you start for the for preparing, the first thing what you should you should do and you are going to do is take up the bear act and go through it. Or like prelims. What is most important is the thorough, thoroughly going through the bare act. So this is something like once you start reading it now, like once, twice, thrice, so you will get the hang of it. So it's like you need to go with for go through it like at least three to five times, like at least three to five times to get the hang of it. Then it's like it's automatically it will come and it will know all the sections by heart. Even if like not the all the full stop and commas and everything, but still you will have the idea of it and the basic concepts of it. So yeah, it won't take much like time or anything. But yeah, three to at least three to five times reading is very necessary for the bare act thing to remember. All right. Uh, so tell us, Madhurima, you're about to join uh, the Bengal Judiciary Services, right? Uh, and this is a question by Aronika Mishra. It's a beautiful question. Uh, you've also practiced three years in litigation. So she wants to know what is more challenging, or how is uh, the judicial officer's experience different from a litigation uh, personnel? Which one do you find more challenging? Litigation is much more challenging. Trust me. It's like it's fun and it's challenging and. It's you whatever you are going to do in the court, it's much more funnier than sitting at a place and deciding on some issues. Definitely, I will say, judi I mean, more than this judicial officer thing. Yes, I will go for litigation any day because that is like much more fun and challenging, and I prefer that. It's better, I believe. Yeah. All right. Uh, there's also okay because we were talking about preparation of uh, different states at different places. Uh, now the problem is that a lot of people want to appear, like you correctly pointed out, a lot of people want to go ahead and appear for Delhi Judiciary because that's the most sought after. However, uh, there, so let's say Pratiksha, who is right now studying in Rajasthan, uh, she wants to know how can she prepare for Delhi because she is outside there, out there in Rajasthan. So how can she solve this problem? And this is for everybody, people from different parts of the state if they want to appear for Delhi Judiciary, how do they go ahead and prepare for it? Firstly, what they need to do is they need to know the syllabus of the Delhi Judiciary examination. So I'll rather say get the syllabus and the first thing which you should do before preparing, I mean, reading and mugging up things, mugging up won't help actually, generally reading up things, start sol getting the solving the question papers, past year papers. That is very important. If you start um, Doing the past year papers, we'll already get an idea of it, but uh, the syllabus as well as the topics and the important parts that exactly what kind of questions they are asking. So that is very important. Even before you are going through, before I mean, you start preparing for it, go through the past year papers first. Then after that, yes, you will get the already you will get the subjects. You will get to know the subject, whatever with, uh, there, and then yes, get the bare acts first. Start with the bare acts, then proper notes. And yes, go through it. I mean, yes. And the most important thing for Delhi Judiciary is GK. So go through the newspaper every day. And it's not only like the current GK, it is also the static GK. So you need to have a, like a good idea of the static GK as well for the judiciary thing for Delhi. And also the language. Thing. Yes, there is like a proper 100 number paper uh, for Hindi and English. So yes. You need to know your language. All right. I hope, Pratiksha, that quite answers your question. Uh, all right. Uh, so uh, we've, we've spoken a lot about the preliminary round. 
However, I want to know uh, what happens. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Yeah, All right. So I want to know what goes behind uh, the advanced uh, level of uh, round. How does that happen? Uh, what are the questions? What are the kind of questions that are asked? Uh, because it's theoretical in nature. So how do you go about? Uh, is there a standard format of writing answers? Uh, yes, that is much more important than how they are asking you the question. There is a proper form, not exactly proper format, but there should be a proper way of writing the mains exam because even after people are clearing the prelims exam, they cannot crack the mains exam even after having so much of knowledge. That is because of the way they are writing the questions. There is somewhere they are making the mistake. So firstly, what they need to do, they need to practice answer writing very nicely. And that's the very, that's the first thing they should do even when they are studying, I mean, preparing for prelims. When they just start studying from prelims, I think that is the most important thing they should do. So there is like a proper, not a proper format, but the way the answer should be there, it, they shouldn't just keep on writing. Don't make it lengthy because examiner are not going to go through your paper. Like if, in, if you are writing like five pages, six pages, no, they will not go through. So make it simple, make it like compact and like short. So hard, what they need to include there is like firstly, whatever the question is, whether it's like, uh, if it is a theoretical question, then there should be, they should start with the bear act, I mean, uh, the section, explaining the section, then the ingredients of the section, also, uh, then illustrations. There are very illustration, many of them are there, but at least put two to three illustration to explain it and to uh, like clarify it. And after that, uh, case laws, like two, three at least. So yeah, that is like more than enough, you are like giving the mains exams. But yeah, please don't make, the uh, answers lengthy because the examiners are not going through your paper like that lengthy papers okay and uh, so when, when you're basically saying that you know the answers shouldn't be lengthy uh, apart from the section the explanation of the section the ingredients and all of that uh, what, what are the standard types of questions that are asked because uh, I mean I mean how are you supposed to answer them is, is my question what are the kinds of questions that are put in in, uh, in an advanced level paper the mains exam it's not like something which you won't be able to answer when once you are preparing for it you will actually know when you will get the question paper in your hand you will know that yes i have read it somewhere even if you can't memorize it or anything but yes it won't be like out of blue moon they are putting something on your question paper you don't even have any idea about that will never happen so and there are like when i already told you okay uh, when you are like uh, preparing for the exam go through the question papers first ask your question papers once you are going through it you will get the hang of it exactly what kind of questions mm -hmm. they are going to ask you so it won't be that so difficult once you are like already going through the question paper the basics and the more important questions only they will ask you it won't be like something you don't know and they will ask you or you have never heard, heard of it that will never happen all right. So, uh, Madhurima, tell us about your study pattern. Did you primarily, because you told that uh, th there's a lot of focus on the procedural laws and also a couple of substantive laws. What was your focus while, uh, how did you divide your time between the subjects? What was your study pattern like? My study pattern was like, see, when in the law school, definitely we haven't studied procedural law so by, by heart, so nicely. So even after like passing out, it was difficult for us to like, know, okay, I i'm not so like good with cpc i was never good with cpc uh, even crpc only ipc i used to know that's it and a little bit of evidence maybe so but i'm very i was very bad with cpc and crpc but today like cpc and crpc are the subjects which are like i'm yeah i know a lot about i can say that so yeah after college the one thing which i did when i started preparing for it i started with the procedural law that is cpc crpc evidence law this is how i guess it should be done at least for me. So I started with uh, the procedural law first, then the substantive laws, as, as well as I was like the sideways, I was keep reading the newspapers and everything because GK is very important, trust me. You will even get the question papers in mains, like 100 marks GK paper. You have to like write it down. It's just like UPSC pattern. So it's very difficult. You have to like read the newspaper, magazines, everything like daily, or it will be very difficult for you to answer that. Okay. All right. And how about this? How did you go about dividing substantive law? Did you start with uh, the civil laws or did you start with the criminal laws or how did you divide the two? I started with uh, CPC. 
civil laws because I had like zero knowledge and I was in litigation, so I had very few knowledge of it and I had to knew it. So yes, I started with CPC. Then I what I did was CRPC and IPC. I started together because they're like you know they have a proper thing together. If you are studying it together, you will understand. And also evidence, yes, because all of them are like the most important subject. So you need to know it by heart. Like each and every sections, all the ingredients, even the illustrations, if you can like properly read them and like fit in your memory. So it's like going to be the best thing that can happen to you. And then the cases, of course. All right. Uh, so let's try to dig in a little deeper about how did you go ahead studying the subjects. Was there a specific formula that you were studying the sections and then uh, you know the material regarding it and the case laws, or were you take did you just take up a book in your hand and you just started going through it from this from first to from cover to cover? How did you go about preparing for uh, each subject in specific? For each subject, what I have done firstly, I have taken the barracks. The first thing, the first need, what you need is the bear acts. So I've started with the bear acts and yes, I've joined the coaching institute. So I had the notes as well. So yeah, every day they used to have classes. So I never used to like attend all the classes because it wasn't possible for me after work to go for class every day. So yes, I had the notes. So what I did was I used to go through the notes as well as the bear acts, like simultaneously. And I used to make my own notes. At least when I am like, um, I was uh, solving the question paper past year's like mains paper, I used to make my own notes and I used to, that is how I used to like uh, practice the answer writing as well. So this is what I did. So, yeah. I think I think that is a very very nice trick uh, that when you're preparing for your means while you're preparing for them uh, simultaneously studying you make your own notes so you whatever you write you remember it obviously and you also sort of get a hang of writing uh, your answers I think that is that is something that uh, people would love to know it's not like that once I will crack the prelims then I will start preparing for mains no it should never be done this okay. is not the way start preparing for mains only from the very this is the very first thing you should do and including the bear acts and because you have to go through the bear acts very thoroughly to get a hang of it yes all right okay uh, uh madhurima we also have a very uh, a, a question that we would want to know and this is a question by anu bhatnagar is there any sort of a domicile quota in the judiciary um, no not really but few states do have the domicile quota and then they have some women's quota as well so it, it varies like uh, in UP, they have women's quota. Some other state as well. So it's not like every state they have some domicile quota or some other quotas. But I'm not sure about domicile quota. I've never come to any. I don't think domicile quota is there. But yes, women's quota is there in two, three different. Uh, yes, I think Madhya Pradesh. They have women's domicile quota. Women's okay. plus domicile. Yes. All right, uh, Anubhat Nagar. I hope that answers your question. Uh, so we now that we are talking about preparation, I think this would be the last question regarding preparation. Uh, what is what is the kind of ideal book list uh, regarding judiciary exams that that you would like to suggest, or uh, would would there be uh, any other uh, like any other pref preferable reading list that you would like to suggest to our viewers? Actually, I never read from in one book or any book actually. Other than the bear acts, I have only done with the notes, which I used to get from the institute. But yes, there are many books. I think there is one for universal, um, universal for the judicial thing. So that is like a good one. I mean, like not the best one or the like really good, but yeah, it's a decent one. One can get that and at least they will get the hang of it. They will understand what is there. I mean, the, there are a lot of questions are there and even they have like explained the questions properly the way they have written it. But yeah, the one thing is that don't follow or don't go through the answers they are like writing or they are giving. You have always have to have a proper you know, focus on the writing the answers according to what like yeah, what I had said before. Like make it simple, make it compact and don't make it lengthy. But in this uh, books, like, like the guidebooks or other books where you will get the uh, main questions and answers, they generally what they do, they keep like, it is very absurd. So you and very lengthy. So you, it's good for reading, but it's not good for like following and mugging it up and writing it down. It's very like, 
not happening or good. All right. Uh, I have a question from Abhay Kumar who wants to know whether the handwriting matters in the mains exam. See, even I have no idea about whether it matters or not, but I don't think so. It will matter if you can like make the examiner understand what exactly you want to like <laughs> explain. So I don't think handwriting will matter at all. Unless and until it is like you can read it. If I can read it, then definitely that it will be of no use to me, right? So yes. All right. Uh, we are, okay, this is the last question about the preparation of mains and uh, prelims that I'm going to take, hopefully. Uh, how to prepare for current affairs? What was your go-to sites or materials? This is a question by Rebecca Diaz. Okay, daily newspapers. Daily newspapers and what I used to do when CLAT, that the magazine, Pratyogita Darpan and all that, yes, I used to do that. That's it. All right. But uh, tell me something, uh, uh, Madhurima, there are a lot of people, you know, who decide to get into judiciary at the last hour, like fifth year is ending. And now that's when we decide that, OK, you know, the next step is judiciary. And thus, uh, the, the year that went by, uh, all the current affairs of that year are like gone in the air. And then to get a hold of the newspapers would become difficult. And uh, competitions like Competition Success or Pratyogita Darpan or Manurama Yearbook for that matter, they just don't suffice in dealing with all the issues. How do you deal with that situation? How do you make sure that the, all the important events of the past year, and especially the ones which are relating to law, are covered? I see. Uh, the one thing is that... Uh see if this like it is like the uh, examination is going to help this year so they few states are like this they won't they are not going to ask you uh, about general knowledge i mean gk like five years back four years back it will be very recent like within a year or one and a half years they generally don't ask but there are states in the name of gk i mean st static gk they ask questions like eight years ago that is like UP. They have a proper 100 marks, I mean, more than maybe 150. I don't remember right now the number of questions they have for GK. But they're like a huge number of questions. And I had given it in, I think, 2016. 2016. And there were questions in the name of static GK from 2008, 2009. Yeah. So it is like, it's you can't just, you know, think about that. They can actually give something like that. And you cannot like predict or decide. So this is something like when you are like um, going to sort the question papers, you will understand that these are the states they are going to ask any questions from anywhere. Like GK can be of any year, but there are uh, states where they're going to ask you only GK for one and a half year. So you just need to go through the, them. And it's online materials are available all the time. Like throughout everything, every time you will get it online. So it won't be a big deal to like catch up to certain affairs. All right. Uh, Madhurima, tell us something. OK, so from finally, we are done with the mains and prelims questions. Let's move to the interview round. Uh, we have a question uh, from uh, just one second. I'll have to check this question went long run. But the, uh, the person wants to know that what can you do to crack uh, the interview? Uh, this is a question by, uh, OK, I, I can't find the person, but this was a question. How can you crack an interview? Okay, what, what, the, okay, first of all, so let's start with how do you go ahead for and appear for an interview? What all do they ask? How do you go ahead? What kind of personality they look at and all of those? Uh, you need to be very sober and very like calm when you are entering the interview room because there will be a uh, panel of three people include where one will be a judge, another two will be some PSC office holder you don't, won't know, be knowing them so generally the judge is going to like grill you very nicely and very politely very very beautifully he's going to grill you though he just want to see that about uh, your confidence level if you once you break down now it's, it's over it's gone you're not going through it but you need to be like your confidence should be like 100 percent. you shouldn't be overconfident but you should be confident enough to answer the question even if you're like giving wrong answers. That is something the interviewers are going to look at you. And for the interview, what you need to do other than the, yeah, the procedural law, they can ask any random questions and their favorite question is, which like many people have told me and I have faced myself, it's about CPC, section five. 
and limitation section five sorry that doesn't apply too soon they will like ask you very like nice puzzled questions and they're going to reel you in it very nicely so yeah these are the other than that gk i have been asked a lot of gk after they get to know that i have like cleared clat and you know i am from a national law university they have treated me very nicely on my static gk and as well as my current affairs gk yeah so all right are, are there are there personal questions as well to ask uh, any sort of personal like how in a law firm we have a lot of hr questions which we find not to be as relevant are there those kind of questions as well or they'll just start right to be grilling they will generally ask you all the relevant questions only like they will start with tell us about yourself then the normal question why did you think judiciary is the right i mean option for you as a career option and these are the basic things they will ask from the beginning and from the beginning and then they will start grilling you with okay let me ask you some gk questions so okay, they can ask you the questions about this okay you don't know this how can you be a judge then this is what generally a lot of judges do to just get your moral down and get your confidence level down so whenever you are in the interview you should be very calm very polite very kind and you should like never going to break down and in the confidence level that is the only thing that is required uh this was a question by the way by aravin ati atitian uh, aravin i'm so sorry i could not find your question at the right time but this was a question by him and thank you so much for asking this question i have a question uh, from arudhika mishra who uh, wants to know uh, okay no i will i'll ask you a question uh, from wow today there are so many questions that i'm actually losing a track of all the questions uh but uh, i will ask you a question uh, from noshin ansari and her question is about the jobs in judicial service she wants to know about the positive and negative aspects like job conditions political pressure etc is it is it very uh, hospitable or is it very hostile to work see when you have joined as a junior then definitely you have been bind by a lot of things around you by your seniors and there are a lot of bindings and pressure as well from the superior judges and everyone from the committee so yes these things are there you can't help it but the positive side is that you are a judge you can like give judgments orders and it's like a you know you feel privileged to sit in that chair and you know sitting on that chair and listening to people who are like giving their life in your hand okay, okay you are the one who's deciding everything for us so it feels good at that point of time when you are there but again there are a lot of pressure from the peer yeah that is there you can help that that was definitely dealt with a lot of subtlety and a lot of diplomacy but okay thank you so much for that answer i will have a question from arunika mishra right now uh, finally her question was does lack of litigation or practice reflect negatively in the interview no they are i mean judges i mean the interviewers are not going are not concerned with it at all they are going to take you on the basis of how good you were to judge and how good you were when you are going to sit on the chair so these are like irrelevant lack of litigation or they don't really do that so okay uh, is is there a demeanor check as well is there a certain way that you need to like get ready for the interview in terms of your appearances in terms of your calm and composure in terms of uh, what you're going to project is there is there a certain code that you need to follow or uh, you can just go the way you are no you cannot just go the way you are it will be like no you will be like thrown out of the interview room there is a proper dress code so it's like not have not been said any Probably, or you should always take permission of the interviewer, the judges, whether I can say it, okay, whether I can come in, and your hand should be like the most judging factor. That is the judging factor. Your hand should never be, you know, when you are talking, you are like using your hands in so many ways, your fingers. So never do that. Let put it niche. You are never going to do that. That is like something a huge negative thing. The interviewer generally considers this, so never going to do that. Okay, how uh, important is English uh, while going for the interview round? How important is your communication skills while you're appearing for an interview? Or they they check your knowledge more than what they check your language in an in a personal interview? Yeah, they will check your knowledge more than your like language. 
and even if you have a language barrier with everything but still it's like yeah it's fine if you have a proper knowledge of law and not only law actually the way you were handling situations the way you are and how confident you are and like you are not overconfident or you are not like arrogant so these are the factors they generally see and it's not like too much of like english or the language it's not a factor not because they have already tested you everything in the mains paper this is like just to taste your personality the way you are they want to see you whether you will be able to sit on that chair whether you will be able to do justice to people or not it's like nothing to do with law or language or anything they will just they, that's why they grill very badly just to see how much you can take and how confident you are at that point of time that's it okay uh, this is a question by rebecca dears we talk about uh, we talked about uh, how do you prepare for prelims and mains uh, tell us about how did you prepare for uh, the the interview or did you prepare at all or did you just like went and just I went there i was like into a dilemma what to prepare the first thing i had in my mind what to wear i didn't even know people are wearing sarees few people are saying no you don't need to wear sarees or anything the, for the guys they can only wear the coats and the white shirt black pants whatever but you, you can wear anything i mean not it's not like sarees you can wear salwars or formals anything but yeah that was the first question i had in my mind i was going to ask in every one then the second was what are they going to ask and how are they going to like grill you because everybody used to say that the judge is going to grill you really badly you are going to cry you might going to cry because inside the room just forget about your ego and everything and be like you know calm and composed because they are going to grill you and they will ask you questions which are like going to be pathetic so i was prepared for that much i was not prepared with any uh, gk or um, law people i mean law subjects nothing but i was prepared to get myself like ha jo karna hai kar lo it's okay fine i'm still calm and still can compose and yeah i can answer your question even if i don't know them this is what I'll but that. any tip you would like to give to people who are preparing for their interviews or who are likely to prepare for their interviews in the future that you never lose your temper be very calm and composed just be yourself the ego shouldn't come and just forget that you are an individual or you have some self respect dignity just forget everything and go inside the room leaving everything outside however they're grilling you just be okay fine all right if you don't know the answer just tell them i don't know the answer it's okay that they might tell you something that okay you don't even know this and that and you want to be a judge it's okay just be okay with it don't cry don't break down just be like confident enough and sit and yeah it's done all right uh, we have a question from anubhav pande and he wants to know what is the attitude that judicial services demands uh, what does the job demands and how different it is from being a judge and being associated with a law firm i am yet to know that actually i haven't yet joined the judiciary so i have no idea about the attitude but yes they have a lot of protocols lot of bindings you can't do this you can't do that there's a lot of do don'ts more than do's so yes we need to like be you know go with the everything whatever they want us to do yes the protocols basically we have to follow the protocols so there are a lot of don'ts more than do's this is okay. how it is. once i'm so <laughs> madhurima tell us uh, something and this is something that i'm really keen to know because i don't know this what is after you crack your exam after you crack, you're done with the interview what is next how do you uh, what happens next to the people who have cleared the interviews is there some sort of induction you join national judicial academy what do you do what what do you do after cracking the exam after cracking the exam after you get the results you party like crazy and trust me you will get unexpected calls from all your friends and extended family members family members will not even even call you for like 3 4 5 years suddenly out of nowhere they are calling you and congratulating you that is the first thing that will happen to you next after that you will get the appointment letter then after getting the appointment letter there is some then procedure that you have to follow with the document things and you have to like submit a lot of the other things as well undertaking you have to give after everything you have to join the judicial academy every state has its own judicial academy and in west bengal it is like uh, the training will be for around one and a half years um, one month in judicial academy then again they will put us back to a lower court with some senior judge some judge under a judge to know how it works and everything is working so this is going to happen simultaneously judicial academy and lower court judicial academy and court 
Okay. Uh, so I have one question with uh, from Anu Bhatnagar, and this seems to be a bit uh, controversial, but I'm still going to take it because I would want to know your views on it. Uh, so our ex CGI, Mr. Keher, he he gave a very blatant statement saying that those who don't do well in their profession opt for lower judiciary. Uh, what is your response to it? Is it true, or or what do you have to say about that? obviously that cannot be true because this stage at this time we really need the condition of calcutta high court is horrible since like past two and a half months because the entire high court is on a strike because there are no judges at all they're supposed to be like 78 judges and we have around 32 judges so the advocates are on a strike since past two and a half months that they are not appearing for any cases if you want to go for your case you go appear yourself so basically, there is always a need for the judges and there is a need for the judges. It's not like that if you're not excelling or doing well in litigation, that's why you're going to opt for that. There are people who are going for like public service to serve the public. Then there are people who are going because it's a prestigious job. And there are people also they were going because it's a secure and comfortable job. But it's not like that. You are not excelling in your own field and that's why you're going to it. I am not like that. I am not going to like accept it. <laughs> My views are like against whatever he has said. Yes. All right. Uh, so we have got a lot of questions on uh, whether uh, you need to live an aloof life or uh, what do you do about your social life? This is a question by Ankit Kumar, who wants to know that a judge requires to be basically a judge requires to be unbiased. And thus, he says that a judge needs to live like uh, live life like a saint, absolutely aloof. How would you manage such life or how do you manage such life? Well, I'm yet to join, so I cannot exactly answer the question because I am myself, I'm like very scared about it. Yet. I'm not going to live alone. I mean, this alone life will kill me or something because generally judges does not have a social life. They cannot socialize. There is again, I told you, there's some protocols. So within the protocols, you cannot socialize all the time, everywhere, with everyone. There's like some fixed things which you have to follow. This is one of them. So this is like a very sad thing to do. And I am sad because of that, because I'm a very social person. And if I don't get to socialize, I'll be into depression maybe. So I don't know how I'm going to handle that. Okay. Uh, but this is also a question that we require to know, because a lot of people while preparing for judiciary exams, they sort of cut off uh, from the social life and they prepare religiously and diligently for it. Um, I know for a fact that you did not do that, but uh, for uh, but but Ankit wants to know that how can one manage studies and social life by preparing for the judiciary exam? It depends. It varies from people to people. See, I but every person has their own views and perceptions in life and what they need to do, how they need to do it. Okay, for me it was not like that. I was into social media, social life, like friends and everything all the time. It wasn't like me that I am like. Uh, out from all the social medias and the social circles, I'm not meeting friends, I'm not with my family gatherings, I'm not going there. I'm just studying, studying, studying. It never happened to me. I was always like, I had a balanced life. I still have a balanced life. So I have always been balanced in all this, like preparation and friends and socializing and everything was like, it's like very, still very balanced. So I never faced any problems regarding this, but there are very many people, especially, UPSC people are there, who are like out from everywhere, they are like inside a room, lock themselves up and they are studying, studying, studying. For judiciary also, many people does that. So it like varies from person to person. Now. I can't exactly say, okay, I can be one of them because I don't need to. I have a balanced life. I can balance my social life and my studies together. People who don't, who can't, so they need to do that. So yes. All right. Uh, I'm going to ask you last two questions. We are left with four minutes. Uh, my first question is that when you said that, you know, litigation for you is more challenging and more fun, what was your motivation behind joining judiciary? And uh, given the fact that lawyers definitely earn way more than uh, the judges, uh, then how can you motivate the youth to join the judicial services that this are? Yeah. My parents wanted me to, and I also wanted to try my hand on it once because, come on, it's one of the like the most prestigious job around. So why not? Let me at least try because I want to regret in life. I never tried for it. How can I even like say that I wanted to be a judge? Whatever. 
but yeah, I just wanted to try my hand and I yeah have cleared it and still I will still say I prefer litigation over judiciary and I love to get back to litigation anytime because that's why I want to do in life and not judiciary. Okay. But what are the benefits of judiciary over litigation or, or over litigating as a as a practice? Litigation is a very hectic life and it's like too much of tension and too much of work and it's like everything in an extreme level. You don't get time to sleep, you don't get time to eat, you like it's a very hectic life you follow. But in judiciary it's a very comfortable life. It's like you have your ten to five job, just go sit and it's like secure. Obviously, you don't need to think that yeah, hey, this month I'm I don't know how much I'm going to get. I'm going to, the bills are not even being cleared, so this is not going to get. I'm every month I'm going to get my salary and my times are fixed. And come on, it's judiciary, so yes, this is how it is. All right, Madhurima. With that, we come to an end of this show. Uh, we still have a couple of questions pending and a couple more to ask you, but we are out of time. And I know for a fact that the other questions that are lined up will take a lot of time. So I think we'll wrap it up here today. Uh, for everybody out there who's watching us, thank you for a tremendously beautiful response in the past few days. It's been just two weeks and we have over 800 people watching us already. So I think it's a great achievement in itself and I, all I have to do is thank you for this thing. Uh, join us next week on an hour with Law Seeker every day from Monday to Friday. We'll be there to answer your questions with an expert, a legal luminary from the industry to help and answer all your questions. Madhurima, thank you for joining us today, taking out your time. Mm -hmm. I know you are, you are at home and you are right now in the vacation mode before you start working finally as a judge. Uh, very hearty congratulations for all of that. And, uh, and all the luck for your... Uh, exam to come that is the delhi exam all the luck for that hope you do well and I hope to see you soon uh, at goa uh, yes again. very soon <laughs> yes uh, thank you so much everybody for watching jo join us next monday only on an hour with law Seco with somebody special yet again i am aditya this is an hour with law Seco every day eight to nine don't forget to like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for the notifications we go live every monday to friday uh, see you soon Thank you. Take care. Good night. Goodbye. And see you. Have a great weekend ahead. This is Aditya signing off.